why had the Buddha chosen him? He had been too sad to pray often, and the housekeeper too busy. Could it be that Buddha would listen to the prayers of a little spotted cat? Welcome back to my reviews of the Newberry Award winners. Today we have The Cat Who Went to Heaven by Elizabeth Coatsworth. It received the award in 1931. Elizabeth Coatsworth was born in Buffalo, New York in 1893. She spent most of her childhood there, but her family traveled wildly. She had been to places as distant as the Alps and Egypt before she was even five. After completing her master's degree, she traveled with her mother to the East, visiting Korea, China, and spending some time in Japan. They spent a lot of nights in monasteries and visited many Buddhist temples. All of these experiences came back into play 10 years later. She criticized a book that had been published by a company that a friend of her worked for, and her friend challenged her to write a book if she thought she could do better. The result was The Cat Who Went to Heaven. She wrote and illustrated the book within a week based on those experiences and inspired by a print of a cat mourning the Buddha that a friend had sent her. She went on to write over 100 books, both for children and for adults. Our story begins with a poor artist and his housekeeper who are barely making ends meet. The housekeeper goes to the market and comes back with a small spotted cat instead of food. At first the artist is upset, but the cat quickly wins them over with its sweet ways and its seeming devotion to Buddha. They end up naming the cat Good Fortune in the hopes that she would bring them just that. Shortly after adopting the cat, a priest from the local temple comes and commissions a large painting of the death of Buddha. The next section of the book is about the artist um, thinking of stories of Buddha and different animals that the Buddha had incarnated into, then drawing the animals and showing them uh, bringing honor to Buddha on his deathbed. Throughout all of this, Good Fortune is his faithful companion, looking in amazement and increasing sadness as he cannot draw the cat because the cat was cursed for being the only one not to come and honor Buddha. From this point on, there will be spoilers because I can't talk about the rest of the book and my reaction to the book without giving away the ending. As the painting progresses and all of these other animals get drawn, the cat grows progressively sad and dejected and stops eating. So the artist decides that he doesn't care what anyone else thinks. Good fortune has shown herself to be a faithful admirer and worshiper of the Buddha and a faithful companion. And so he paints the cat into the commissioned work. They bring the cat in to see and literally the cat is so happy she dies. Yeah. The priest comes and sees that there is a cat in the painting and immediately is enraged that he would include this cursed animal and declares that they're going to have a public burning of the artwork in order to bring judgment for the way that the artist has disrespected. However, the next morning they come back and they call the artist and it turns out that overnight a miracle has occurred. My first question on reading this was how accurate it was to the culture and the religion that it's portraying. I don't really know anything about Buddhism. From the reviews that I found online, most of them were very positive. I did find a review from a Buddhist reverend who uh, reviewed it favorably. So I can't speak to the accuracy of it, uh, but it does seem that overall there is a positive feeling about this book. Learning that Coatsworth herself had traveled to Japan and had visited temples and spoken with people there did alleviate some of the concerns that I had that way. I know that this may come as a surprise for a book called The Cat That Went to Heaven. I wasn't expecting the cat to die in that way. I think it was more the way the cat died than that the cat actually died. The fact that in this moment of getting what she wanted, she's so happy she lays down and like, what? I. Some people have very fond memories of this book uh, from their childhood, and uh, but I, <laughs> I have to wonder how some children would react to that and the way that it happens. It just, it was uh, unsettling to me. 
obviously each child is different, so parents would just want to be aware of the content and make that decision for their own child. I really liked the little poems that are from the housekeeper that kind of divide up the book and divide the sections. I did think that the illustrations were lovely. We get like the pieces of the uh, of the painting as it goes and as the stories are told. And I thought that that helped to tie everything together. I, I liked the larger concept of this cat kind of coming in and changing their perception of what had been considered before and changing people's minds, as well as the thread of caring for others that's throughout the stories. But the way that the cat dies uh, just kind of put me off from the story a bit. This was a quick read. I can see why some people have found it inspiring uh, or remember it fondly from their childhood. This book seems to be fairly widely available. So if you're interested, you could probably find a copy at your local library or request one through them or purchase it from any used or new bookseller. Next up, we have Waterless Mountain by Laura Adams Armour. Know absolutely nothing about this as with most of them. Um, so we shall see how that goes. I will see you later. Thanks and happy reading. I forgot. Elizabeth Coatsworth was no. She wrote this book within a week. <clears throat> within a week, she she wrote the book with. She wrote and illustrated the book within a week based on her experience. She wrote and illustrated the book, a print someone had sent her, of a cat. She went into her... They named the cat Good Luck, hoping that she will bring good luck to them. Nope. All right. Shortly after they adopt the... <laughs> and I thought that helped... Uh, <clears throat> and I thought that that helped to tie everything together.